Hi, I'm Phil Berman from Balanced Catamarans. I'm in Annapolis, Maryland. It's uh, October of uh, 2020. Uh, the boat show had been canceled, so we brought a boat here to do demonstration sales and private appointments on the Balance 526. Um, one of the things about boat shows, normal boat shows, is that you're asked a lot of questions, and one of the things that I find a little bit frustrating about boat shows sometimes is people come to me and say, what's the best boat? And my attitude always is, well, you really, the best boat depends upon what you're trying to do, where you're trying to go, what kind of performance you want. Um, that's why I've never been a big believer in contests or competitions of the best boat, because if you want to get a boat for a charter program or you're not interested in doing a lot of distance voyaging, then there are boats that are better suited for that agenda than others. So it's always about a person's budget, their cruising agenda, and the performance expectations that they have for the feeling of sailing that they want. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to features on boats, I think it's really important to recognize that there's advantages and disadvantages always to things. Which brings me to the subject of dagger boards and keels. Uh, a lot of chatter on the internet about this. Uh, this is a subject that I know a lot about. Uh, I've sold 900 catamarans in my life. Um, been involved with the build um, of at least 100 and, well, at least 100 probably dagger board catamarans over the years, so from different companies that I've worked with. So I have a lot of experience with dagger boards and a lot of experience with keels as well. Um, all of our boats come standard with dagger boards, okay? We had a customer who came to us at Balance and said, you know, I think I'd like to have keels on my boat just to make my boat a lot simpler. Um, but he said, you have to design them to really perform. They have to perform really, really well. And keels come in all shapes and sizes. The keels that we do on, on the balance catamarans have to be much deeper than uh, the rudders to get proper windward performance, okay? So typically when you ask for performance keels on our boats, you're gonna be increasing uh, the draft of the boat will go from about three and a half feet when you get a, a keel cap. Um, and that's because if you don't have that draft and you don't have a really nicely uh, foil shaped keel, your windward performance will really be poor. Um, I was at a shipyard uh, last week here in the Chesapeake Bay and there were a lot of catamarans out of the water. And one of the things I was reminded of is that on most of the production caps that I saw, the keels are actually really shallow. Um, and many times they, they go just below the rudders. Um, which means that they're only like, on many of them, it seemed like they were two or three feet deep. And I was surprised by that and, and reminding myself, well, gosh, no wonder they don't perform well to windward. They just simply aren't deep enough. But in addition to that, they have really huge, fat, uh, bulbous fronts. And they don't have a foiled shape to them. And so effectively, what so many of those boats do is they go to windward and it's hard to get more than 120 degrees, you know? If you start sailing on a on a, a boat like that with those kinds of keels, if you don't crack off and reach at really high speed, you're just making a lot of leeway. And if you bring the boat up into the wind, you start crabbing. Um, I mean, you can always point a keel cat and get the telltales to flow high into the wind, but the boat's literally kind of going sideways. And everybody learns that eventually, and they just crack off and, and, and literally like close reach to windward, which is a complaint that a lot of monohull people have. <laughs> That's where um, dagger boards make a big difference. But there is a real misnomer amongst a lot of consumers that a dagger board in and of itself makes a boat go fast. Um, I mean, you can take a big, heavy, fat hulled catamaran and put a dagger board on it, and it'll sail better than if it, it'll sail better than it would if it didn't have the dagger board to windward, but it's still gonna be a slow boat. I mean, ultimately speed is about the whole fineness ratio of the boat, uh, the sail plan, uh, the weight of the boat, and dagger boards, simply enhance the performance of the boat. Um, but there are advantages to keels, and so I just wanted to talk briefly about what those advantages are, and then I can talk about what the disadvantages are. Um, there's no moving parts, so it's one less thing to operate or break. <laughs> if you ground the boat with a keel boat, keels are pretty easy to repair. They're just big lumpy appendages of fiberglass. You haul the boat out of the water, grind it down, slap some glass and resin on it, paint it in the way you go. Uh, it's typically not a, 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 a super costly thing to repair them. Um, breaking a board, breaking a dagger board, um, is, is obviously much more costly. If you were to shear a board off, um, it, it's pretty costly. And if it's like a curved dagger board, then it's even more costly because 
the shipping box from the builder to you is just, it's got to be huge and, 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 and it's a more of an event to fix. The other advantage is that if you have big wide keels, when you put the boat on the hard, you can just literally set the boat down on those keels and just put cradles on the, on the bow and the stern. When you're uh, chalking a dagger boarded boat on the hard, you, you have to build up wooden blocks and put some uh, sandbags or soft things for the hull to conform into because the weight of the boat is going to be over the bulkheads and the boat needs to sit softly into them, but it's, it's not a big deal when you learn how to do it. Um, another advantage of uh, keels is that they cost a lot less money to fabricate because you don't have to build a trunk and you don't have to build a dagger board, you don't have to have the fittings to raise and lower the dagger board, which is why at Balance, if people elect to uh, order keels from us, we charge them less money. Um, you get a little bit more cabinetry and midships on a keel boat because you don't have the dagger board trunks. Um, the keels add a bit of buoyancy to the boat because they're big and the larger they are, the larger the keels, the more buoyancy you get. So it's pretty hard for me to say how much buoyancy you're going to gain on a given design because I don't know the buoyancy calculations for that particular thing, but you do get, you do get a bit of, of buoyancy. Another advantage to keels is that if the dagger board trunks aren't built properly and really done nicely, the dagger boards can rattle a little bit in the trunk. So I used to see that a lot on older designs, but at this point now, that's really not, not an issue or a, or a complaint. Uh, now let's talk about the advantages of dagger boards over keels. Boarded cats point higher into the wind. They, um, and of course, when you're comparing a keel cat to a boarded cat, you really have to look at the size of the keel, the shape of the keel, how deep it is, how foiled it is to really accurately say. But even if you have a really nicely shaped performance keel, uh, the dagger boarded boat is going to point better. And as I say, if you point a boat up into the wind, you can get your telltales flowing. On a dagger board boat, the boat is going to sit there and cleave. It's going to sail. And if you get an adverse knock on the wind, it's not going to crap. It's just going to keep going. And it leads to this amazingly beautiful feel when you're sailing the boat to windward. It's, it's really quite, quite exceptional. And so people that are just really thrilled about sailing, um, that's an important thing for them to have that, that feel and to have their boat point. But also if you're going voyaging and you suddenly added uh, a significant amount of area where you can sail to, if you're pointing five to seven degrees higher, that means you're opening up horizons of places you can go to, you know, without motoring or, or places that you might bypass simply because you don't want to sail to windward because your boat is either too slow or makes too much leeway. Um, so that's a thing. The, the other thing is that and I think this is probably the biggest advantage of the dagger boards is that when the dagger boards are fully raised, the lowest point of your boat is your rudder. And on most of our cats, it's in an area of three and a half feet. So the difference between three and a half feet and four and a half or five feet, it closes off certain places that you really can't get to. Like here on the Chesapeake Bay, I'm telling you, this is a really shallow area here. And last week I was sailing with some friends uh, that have a dagger board cat and we needed to get it into a channel of a little secluded little anchorage and you know the water was <laughs> really low and you know the uh, that extra foot can make can make a difference it's a really nice thing to have um, so the shoal draft nature of the dagger board is, is, is really neat um, the other thing that is often overlooked about dagger boards in my opinion is that when you have the dagger board when you're sailing off wind you raise the dagger boards up we typically keep the boards down a quarter uh, about uh, about a quarter when we're, we're sailing off the wind is that the way the boat sails off the wind is incredibly magic because if you have a, a boat such as ours that have mechanical steering and your boards are up you're really uh, pivoting off the back of the boat with the rudders because the boards are up so far that they're not inhibiting the turning of your boat whereas if you have big fixed keels your boat is much much stiffer because it's literally on kind of train tracks to some extent so the responsiveness of a dagger boarded boat when you're surfing and sailing off the wind, it's, it's incredible. And you also obviously are reducing your wetted surface dramatically, right, over a, a, over a big fixed keel when you're off the wind. And so I think it's a really often overlooked aspect of, um, of a dagger boarded boat. Um, it, it offers a playful, faster, you know, off the wind experience. Um, the biggest objection I think that people have um, to dagger boards is worrying about either A, breaking a dagger board or B, 
hitting their rudder if their dagger board is up or their sail drive or something like that. And honestly, there's a very simple solution to that that many people don't opt for, but we do um, offer at Balance for those that want it. And they're called vestigial keels. And they're small protective uh, keels or skegs that you put on a dagger boarded boat that protect the sail drives and the rudder. They go down to that depth. Um, all the studies we've done, you only lose 0.2 knots with the added drag of, of a small vestigial keel. And it's an option that we're now um, offering anybody that gets a balanced cap. For people that do that, you remove all the objections, literally, of anybody that claims that keels are better, and you gain all of the advantages of a dagger boarded boat. You gain all the protection, you gain the upwind performance, you gain the offwind performance. So, for those people that are prepared to give up a little bit of performance, um, that option is a good option if they're worried about protecting their sail drives, their rudders, or, or breaking a dagger board. Because if you have vestigial keels and you're in any kind of shallow water situation, you simply raise your dagger boards up higher than the vestigial keel. And in that sense, your dagger board will be completely protected and you don't have to worry about it. <clears throat> but what I would say though is, of all the dagger boarded boats that I've sold, sold over the years, very few of my customers have actually broken dagger boards. Um, it's not that common an experience. Um, in the old days, Katana used to make their dagger boards pretty narrow and you literally were supposed to raise them as the wind came up. And sometimes the wind would come up and people wouldn't do it and a board would snap just from the sheer load. That's not the case on any of the boats that we build or really any, any builders now have kind of gotten around that problem. Uh, so it's customer choice uh, at Balance. We're building boats for performance voyagers and cruisers and experienced sailors. And we want them to have the option of picking any of these three um, and, and go from there. And if they want just keels, it'll save them some money. So stay healthy, stay in balance.